an old saying is that from children and historians you get the truth. Uh, I will talk about utility and love in transport systems. Uh, there's a tension in all transport between uh, what we need to go from A to B, transport, and then we like it. And I would say that in the development of, of transport history, there's always been this tension, and we, we, have to, we have to come over this. We are handling not only transport, but travel, love, feelings, things that are deeply embedded in our lives. Uh, I've studied uh, the road system, uh, and I've studied mopeds. That's nearly only love, I would say. There's no, not much utility in, in old mopeds, uh, uh, and so on. These systems are very, very large. They are built a long time ago, and thus they are sort of frozen ideology. When we built the, the, the railway system in Sweden, we started it around 1850, and we didn't... The, the thing is that we wanted the system to open up the country, to give, us, to give everyone the ability to, 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 to move. But we also built it in a certain physical way that made it impossible to have fast trains going over 200 kilometers. So we had to invent the X2000 because the, 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 the tracks were a bit too curvy. So, when we decide on a transport system, it lasts for 100, 150 years, and we're stuck with history, in a sense. There's a momentum, and it's very, very hard to change. We will hear about the, the traffic uh, control system, about the toll, toll system in Stockholm later on, and this was very, very hard to, to get uh, people's acceptance for, for uh, paying for, for roads, for example. The Slussen issue uh, gives many, many feelings on, in, in the debate and so on. Bromma, a picture about, on Bromma from 1936 when it opened. Uh, actually, the second charter tourism was, uh, travel was to uh, going to Las Palmas uh, from, from this place in 1955. Uh, Errol Flynn was there at the same time having his vacation. And this made an explosion in, in air travel. So now we have over 2 million people, 2,200,000 traveling abroad every year. And we sort of have the feeling that we deserve it. We know that the carbon footprint is very high, but I worked so hard, so why can't I go to Thailand? It's sort of embedded in our lives. The history of all transport systems is the story of better and more all the time. A better life, when the co or, and it's faster life. And you can see the helicopters for everybody, a vision in the 50s, where uh, apparently in the future we would have the same family structure with the mother at home waving to the, to the man uh, leaving for job in his own helicopter. Uh, and we see that the, the, the commercial for Volvo and Saab, it really, in Sweden in the 1950s, the, 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 the car ownership was a great movement of democracy. And everyone wanted a car. One of the most important factors in, in the development of, of transportation or uh, automobility was uh, the Futurama exhibition in New York, 1939. It was General Motors that, uh, that built it, and you went on a train like this, and you saw miniature buildings and cities and transport systems. And you would imagine that people, at, that, they, that they made... Uh, that they wanted to promote their new cars. This is cars in 1960. They thought that cars would look like this. But actually, they promoted a state-funded uh, system of roads, a federal road system called the Interstate Highway 
system. And this was done in Sweden too by the Swedish road plan in 1958, uh, where the, we rolled out a, 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 a motorway net over Sweden, and we're still building on it. So it takes a while. But the driving force behind it was this. Vacation with a car. G this was the dream for everybody in Sweden. People longed it. We, we got longer vacation, three weeks, four weeks, and then five weeks, and we wanted to go on a car vacation. So this peop these people here have a small uh, caravan after the car. It's, an, it's a car from before the war that has, were very cheap after, after the Second World War and they could actually go on vacation. This was the time when people started to get hot water in their homes. Uh, and we built apartments, huge projects building apartments and, and getting other infrasystems to the people. But in the vacation, we wanted to go out camping, doing the dishes with cold water and so on. So again, for the mother, it was perhaps not. <laughs> it was a vacation to come home, perhaps. Uh, but the, the three boys are, are helping her, and, and it seems like a period. When I was a child, a little bit after this period, uh, we also went on a on, uh, car holiday. And we all have uh, a remembrance of, of, of that. And I still do. Strangely enough, I educate my children to go on a car vacation, I travel all over Sweden and it's so nice. And I try to forget the things about uh, carbon uh, and so on. Uh, uh, I, I, I earn it, so, uh, sort of. This also happened in Europe, all over Europe and in the United States at the same time after the Second World War. The uh, European road network was launched, and we're still building it, and it was a fantastic accomplishment done by Gunnar Myrdal, the Swedish former minister uh, that headed European Commission of Europe, Economic Commission of Europe, and uh, a standardization of all road traffic uh, signs and so on, all over Europe, uh, funded by the Marshall uh, money, of course. So today, we are facing, I would say, an absolute need to uh, build, rebuild our road transport system. And we have the utility, we know why we have to do it. Uh, and you will hear more, more, more about that. But can you really love an electric car? Can you really get the feeling of the transport system that you take your car and... Mm. No, because it has no sound. It has no range. It has no speed. It has no joy. Even though it's very, very practical. I mean, an ordinary car stands still for most of the time. I think 95% of all the trips are, are below 50 kilometers, so an electric car is perfect. But we, need, we, we want to buy that little extra thing to be able to just, well, today I think perhaps I will go to Malmö. No, I won't do it, but, but I have the ability, I have the autonomy, I have the status. There's a huge problem with the electric vehicle that you reach only the very rich and the, very, the people that want to be first-time adopters. That they, it gives them status to have an electric car. But the broad masses, if you go back one picture to this, how to get people to love, to embrace the new technology. Because this time, we, don't get any be we, we cannot get any better. We don't get more. We have to settle with the transport, taking us from point A to point B. The freedom that's associated with a private car, with the oil economy, will be... We have to find a solution on that. How do we sell something that's not, if we're honest, not as good? 
the history of transportation from 1903 in Sweden when the first exhibition was held in Stockholm by, and the Royal Automobile Club was founded until now. 2006 was the year when the, when the, the Stern report really put the, 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 the climate uh, agenda, uh, put, put the climate question on, on the agenda. And where's the joy to drive? And I, I, I think when we talk about transport, we really need to uh, see that we are not dealing with rational people here. We're not dealing with consumer that buys transport. We are uh, dealing with people deeply in love. And you know how rational you are when you're in love. Not at all. Thank you very much.